Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Dennis, for that fine introduction. I had to sort of figure out if that was really me he was talking about there. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be in Houston. I've enjoyed very much. I want to thank the Klein District for inviting me to come and be with your young people. We've had a marvelous time these last two days of sharing several different things. As I told them when I came, I come bearing the hat of a composer that is the author of the two works that they're going to perform tonight. So it's kind of a special thing to meet someone that actually wrote the music that you're going to sing. So many of our composers are no longer with us. I'm glad to be a still, yeah, living composer, <laughs> still around to <clears throat> talk about my music. So I wear that hat. And then this being African American History Month, it's also a special joy to share with you a culture out of which I grew up the music of the African-American church that became a so an important part of my lifestyle and uh, just to share an entire culture. So we, we're bringing both of those to bear. Gospel music was basically created around the turn of the century. Dr. Thomas A. Dorsey, the, con the acknowledged sort of modern founder, sort of set the tone for everything that we do today. You probably best know Dorsey for his uh, song, Take My Hand, Precious Lord, Lead Me On, Let Me Stand, a very popular song in many of our ch churches nowadays. So it was Dorsey being a blues pianist. He was a pianist for Gertrude Ma Rainey, Bessie Smith, famous female blues singers. And he simply took that style and began to write music for the church. And that style has endured to today as our modern contemporary gospel music sound. Now, one of the important things about gospel is that unlike Western European art music, where after it's all over, then you sort of get involved and you, you give your choir wonderful applause and standing ovations and you just let them know at that time what you feel. In gospel music, it's still folk music and it's still communal. We want to know right away that you're somehow involved. So how are we going to do that? We thought we'd teach you a little song today and let you actually become a part of this gospel community that we're going to be a part of. And we're going to teach you in true gospel style, oral tradition that said, I'm going to say something and you simply say back to me what I say. Say these words, you ought to take some time out, take some time out. And, serve and serve the Lord. You ought to take some time out, take some time out. And, serve and serve the Lord. Thank him for the problems he's brought you through. Thank him for the good things he's doing for you. You ought to take some time out, take some time out. and serve the Lord. Let's do that once more. You ought to take some time out and serve the Lord. You ought to take some time out and serve the Lord. Thank him for the problems he brought you through. Thank him for the good things he's doing for you. You ought to take some time out and serve the Lord. I'm going to sing it. You sing it back to me. You ought to take some time out and serve the Lord. You ought to take some time out and serve the Lord. Thank him for the problems he's brought you through. Thank him for the good things he's doing for you. You ought to take some time out and serve the Lord. Now, y'all don't know it, but y'all just been black and eyes, and y'all don't even know it. <laughs> All right. Some of those little bent notes that you just did, you didn't even think you had that in your voice to do, did you? All right, instruments, if you'll help me. I'm going to sing it once all the way through, and then you'll sing it with me. Listen. You ought to take some time out and serve the Lord. You ought to take some time out and serve the Lord. Thank him for the problems he brought you through. Thank him for the good things he's doing for you. You ought to take some time out and serve. Sing it with me. You ought to take
you had to clap, you had to sing. Now, let's see if you can do the final act of being an African-American gospel person. Stand up. Probably we learned how to move, didn't we? Let's see if we can move. and the Gospel Mass were written. Um, a very strong, exciting music tradition. Many times, if you've ever been to an African-American church, you wonder why services go on for three hours. <laughs> I think now you begin to understand the music is so wonderful that nobody wants to go home. You know, just like you kind of just said it. Great, we're gonna do now Gospel Magnificat. We're gonna get you involved at certain points too, so be ready to get involved. Gospel Magnificat.
Thank you very much. The Gospel Mass was written while I was then an associate professor at the University of Illinois in Champaign. It was written right after a special council in the Catholic Church called Vatican II. Up until that point in the Catholic worship service, everything had been done in Latin. So one of the things that Vatican II said was, we can now do the Mass in English. Before all you would have heard would have been Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax, credo in unum Deum, uh, Agnus, Dei, uh, Agnus Dei, and Santus, Santus Benedictus. Uh, that's all you would have heard. But up at, at Vatican II, the Pope said, okay, let's switch over and let's do the Mass now in English. And he also said in that same council that he wanted the gift of the African-American experience to enrich the life of the Catholic Church. He called it the gift of negritude. He wanted the gift of negritude to enrich the life of the Catholic Church at that time. Well, it's hard to even conceive that the spiritual, the Negro spiritual, which was so sacred to the African-American community, was banned from the Catholic Church because it was, it was considered too worldly a music to be done in the worship. So all of a sudden, now there's the opportunity for the African-American experience to come into the life of the Catholic Church. And if you've been to a Catholic church recently that has a strongly African-American experience in it, you'll see drums, tambourines, Hammond organs. You'll see just about everything that happens in the traditional African-American church. So gradually, different forms of music came back into the life of the church of the African-American experience to enrich the life of the Catholic church at that time period. So this is the reason for the composition of the Gospel Mass. Uh, it was written at the University of Illinois for my student choir back, back then and there. The idea was to take those forms that I had heard so often, that is, we often hear the masses of Beethoven, Schubert, Brahms, Mozart, and think of those wonderful settings representing Western Europe. There was nothing on the market that had my community's flavor in the, in the mass. So that was the impetus for the creation of it. Well, we started doing it, you know, and <clears throat> you start thinking about con combining all of those years of uh, European tradition with a comparatively new music form of the early 1900s, because gospel music didn't get crystallized until maybe 1915, 1917, thereabouts. But you know, gradually as we started thinking about it, we said, okay, we may not have been saying Kyrie eleison, but in the black church, we've been saying, Lord have mercy for a long time. <laughs> Amen? Amen. We may not have been saying, Gloria in excelsis Deo et in terra pax hominibus, but we've been saying, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, I love you, Lord. We've been saying all those kind of things in the African-American church community for a long time. So as we gradually put the mass into a more universal concept, uh, it became easier and easier and easier to take those te texts and combine them with the traditions of African-American gospel music. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you a gospel mass. <laughs> 